told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the fruit, the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? 12. The man said, the woman who you gave to me, to be with me, she gave me the fruits from the tree and I ate. Amen. You see, yesterday we spoke a lot about how, how God wants us to have a perfect relationship or we wish for a perfect relationship. But the world keeps speaking to us, asking us, what has God said? And it's distorted our mentality and our image of what God intended marriage and relationship to be. Most of us, the reason why we are where we are today is because we haven't stopped blaming other people for what is going wrong in our lives. We are still in the blame game business. Is somebody here with me? We are in the blame game business. If Kwame hadn't done this to me, like this would not have happened. So you have, you keep blaming. We are not learning, but we are blaming. Hello? Are we here? So some of us have even blamed our way into marriages. We married somebody because we want, you know, somebody sent me a message this week that she's semi-attached, semi-singled. But I know that this person is married. And I decided not to answer this person because this is somebody who I know who wanted to marry somebody like, is not, should I say like? Who wanted to marry, okay, let me use like. Who wanted to marry somebody like Roger? Or who wanted to marry Roger at first, but it didn't happen. So she was still searching for Roger in the men that came her way. So now I think she's still not seeing the Roger in the man. So to her, she's semi-single, semi-attached. You haven't keep, stopped blaming other people. If it wasn't for this woman. So me, I tell people that, listen, I don't know how to play Cupid. In my few years of ministry, I've had people who try to get close to me because they are interested in somebody who is around me, especially the ladies. They see that mommy is close to somebody, so they try to, oh, mommy, uh, let me do it. Because you are interested in somebody. Hey, oh, yeah, they're mimi kebi mao. Me, I don't know how to do that thing. So don't use me as your target. Let me tell you before you try it. I don't know how to play Cupid. Me ya enfa, ukofa badia. I'll analyze it and tell you that this is what is wrong or this is what is right and this is what you can do. But I don't know how to put two people together. Please. Those I cancel, did I put you together? Say me, oh. Even Pastor Charles like this puts me in trouble. Because somebody said me, I'm the one who connected Ebi to Pastor. But Ebi, at that time, I didn't know her. Some of you have not stopped the blame game. You are always blaming somebody for your failed relationship. When will you sit down and check your own self? And decide that I had a mind to accept the fruit or not. But I did. So what can I do about it? Am I here? And now you're serious. And I say, hey, steady. Can I continue? The blame game. Some of you are in the blame game business. You are blaming everybody for your failed relationship. You are blaming everybody for your failed marriage. You are blaming everybody for why Akosia left. Somebody went to gossip. It, the truth is that So what did you do? When will you sit down and say that maybe I didn't do right with this woman. That is why she left. When will you sit down and say maybe I didn't do right with this man. That is why the man left. The blame game business. 
You see, after we, we do the blame game business, we start playing hide and seek with God. We are half in God, half outside. We are playing hide and seek. We can see that with all these things that Adam and Eve did, then there was a curse. It started from the woman, it started from the serpent, it went to the woman, it went to Adam. They accepted their fate and they were driven out of the garden. Some of you, because of some things that you've tasted and engaged in, the truth is that you've been driven out of a certain comfortable zone. You know, your experience has become a mental picture in your mind. And you can't get rid of that mental picture. Is somebody getting me or I should elaborate? I should flow. Glad they are here. You see, you have a certain mindset about relationship. You have a certain, a certain thing that you, you don't believe that you can even be with a man and nothing will happen and you guys will, will get married. You are like, You see what's in your mind. What if I decide to be with this man and when, when we go in bed, I realize that his machine gun is very small. How did you know the difference and start weighing small and big and medium and large? You see, you've been driven out, but that mental picture is harming you. To you, some short guy is, played rough with your hand. So, short guys, they are, they are out of the picture. Your mind is worrying you. You've been driven out. After Adam and Eve were driven out, they had Cain and Abel. We all know the story. These two people decided to massacre one another. One killed the other. Some of you, one girl is killing the other because you are looking for this one and this one is like this. You are still looking for that ex. So you've combined three or four different men. Because we three we wosika se kweku we so the five men you are looking for kweku in the five of them and you are confused you have been driven out you see until we decide to take the words of god and the laws of god serious we would not gain back our garden we will not gain back our sanity when it comes to marriage marriage is very tough I will not lie to you. Marriage is not hanky -pan. You see, sometimes I say that the storybooks we read, they've worried us a lot. Because after reading the storybook and we get to the end, it says what? And they live happily ever after. They don't tell us what happened in the happy ever after. So some of us feel that immediately after wearing the corset dress and not trying, we are not able to sit down well and all those things. The happily ever after has started. But we don't know that that is when the hard work starts today i was reading my bible and i came across something which got me very interested how many people know ruth and boaz in the bible ruth naomi opa boaz how many of us know that story we know about ruth followed the mother-in-law and came to a foreign land in this story we realize that when ruth came they had nothing this young woman wanted to help the mother-in-law, fend for the mother-in-law, and all those things. Let's go to Leviticus 19, verses 9. Leviticus 19, verses 9. When you reap the harvest of the land, you shall not reap to the very edge of your field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Next verse. You shall not strip your vineyard bare or gather the fallen grapes of your vineyard. You shall leave them for the poor and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Is this a commandment from God? Is this a commandment from God? This is a commandment from God. 
And Boaz, who was not married, knew this commandment was from God. And this is how Boaz met Ruth. How many people know that? How many people know that this is how Boaz met Ruth? Let's go to the book of Ruth, chapter 2. Let's go to Ruth 2, verse 11, to make it short. Okay, let's go to 8 first. So Boaz said to Ruth, my daughter. Let's go to 8. Then Boaz said to Ruth, now listen, my daughter. Do not go to glee in another field or leave this one, but keep close to my young woman. Next. Keep your eyes on the field that is being reaped and follow behind them. I have ordered the young men not to bother you. If you get thirsty, go to the vessel and, vessels and drink from what the young men have drawn. Next. Then she fell prostrate and her face to the ground and said to him, Why have I found favor in your sight that you should take notice of me when I am a foreigner? But Boaz answered her, All that you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband has been fully told me and how you left your father and mother and your native land and came to the people that you did not know before. This is a perfect example of somebody who listened to God and found a wife. Who are you listening to and who are you finding? Did you just understand what I said? There was an instruction in the Bible that says that when you harvest your land, don't harvest everything. Leave some for foreigners, for poor people, for those who are hungry, so that when they come, they would be able to harvest and have something to eat. This is an instruction in the Bible that Boaz followed. When he followed the instruction, he noticed that these poor people were coming. Then he, his eyes was drawn to this particular one and asked people, who is that young woman? Then they told Boaz the story. Like Pastor Charles saw the wife and told God that if she's the one, do A, B, C, and D. You are in church, but you are not following God's instruction. But you are, you are telling yourself that, eh, how will I know that God really wants me to get involved with this or get involved with that? Which instruction are you following? Can I continue? Do you understand what I just said? Or I confuse somebody? If you'll be able to follow the dictates of God, you would be drawn or somebody will be drawn to you who is meant for you. But until you follow that dictate, there will be chaos and confusion. Your Abel and your Cain would be fighting. You see, so many of us have gotten ourselves into a mess because we did not listen to God. We found ourselves in situations where we have what they call a convenient situationship. What do they mean by a convenient situationship? You have somebody in your life, and yes, I'm more trimp now, more moon, new hope, moon, so I'm more. I say something which is there, uh huh, Eunice, you get the drift. I said something which is there, oh, when you are bored, you call this person, oh, can we go out maybe on. Saturday, I think I'm bored. Oh, let's, let's, let's see. Let's see. Let's go out. Both of you know that when you go out, there's a probability that you end up having sex, but no strings attached. Who told you that you can have sex without strings attached? Who told you that? If you are having sex without strings attached, it means your conscience is dead. Sorry, but that's the truth. So you are in a convenient situation. You have tested what you don't have to taste. So now you don't know which is which. Once it says, yeah, you, you, you've seen five people. But there's one that you can easily go under the sheets with. A convenient situation. So when you want something, you call this person. 
you know, deep down, you know you cannot marry this person. You don't like certain things about this person. But because of the sex, when and as and when you need it, convenient sake, you call this person. You have those who they say passionate situationship. There's some sort of fight. Well, you, you can be fine, but immediately you see the person, that physical attraction. You just can't resist. Hey. Mm. Passionate situationship. You see the way you are confusing your life. When you see this person, just say, there's certain you have to give it to you. Or see here, at your bathroom to me saying, I'm a prophet, me rest on your neck, you can't cry, not be being then. I will make all lines. No, I will forever say this example. Somebody told me that one of my sons, or some of me, me who need she, need she, need she, need she, need she, or the other belt, and I be being me. Passion passionate situation somebody was bold enough the person approached me and told me that mommy i love one of your sons and i said oh that's not bad but i don't think it will work or say me i'll find a way to let it work but mommy mark it on the wall if this guy tries and he gets close to me me many the person is in church or say, mommy, me say, we were in the order. Of the this is not story. This is not all you. And it was Pastor David that the person wanted. The person said, mommy, mark it on the wall, me. So, or oh, your mistake. No, be, be, me say, me, 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 no. And you mean to me, 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 Passionate situation. And some of you, that passion has moved you to do things that you were not supposed to do. You have gone to the extent of doing things. And now you are stuck. But you are stuck. That passion. Muzi. <laughs> Don't know. Ah, Pastor David, did I warn you on that? Did I tell you? I didn't tell you who. But I warned you. You see, I was so open with this person that sometimes I want to be as open as possible so that you can tell me your most terrible plans so that I can try and redirect your mind. This person was genuine. That is her. And that was the plan. That is what, she, that is what the world had taught her. That if I can do this, I'll be able to trap this man. And some of you, you have been trapped with bone one, bone two, bone three. You are trapped. So somebody can sit in church and say, say, wait. And you two, every day, they are calling you and sending you momo and sending you things. And you two, you are there and you are excited. Oh, this girl, there, the way she treats me. Passionate situation. Very soon, you land in trouble. All of a sudden, they've turned you into a massage therapist. Sorry. You are in church. You are into what they call friends with benefits situationship. Friends with... I hear that thing is a movie. It's a movie. I hear it's a movie. I didn't know. And the movie has been able to capture a lot of people and a lot of people feel that, oh, it's normal, friends with benefits. So, you be my friend. As yesterday, I said, those people, it's called, now you were lying. That's what, that one. Who's your guy? Now only me were lying. So, any time, any day, me were boy cry, now me were cry for me. So, there are people who are married, but are doing friends with benefits. are doing friends with benefits. Oh, whenever your wife disturbs me, call me. I'll be at your beck and call. After all, what? 
Whenever your husband plays the buffoon, just give me a call. I'll be there. And you too, you have saved this person's number. And when there is a problem in the home, that is when you go and sit at a corner. I miss you. When am I seeing you? When are you seeing you? <laughs> Anytime there's a problem, instead of you, if you want to renew your mind, instead of you deleting this number, you keep this number and then you start chatting and saying things. So when are you coming? <laughs> Two days ago, one of my sons showed me a text message that a young lady in their area said, eh, I want a guy. You, you have to look for a guy for me. I've been single for too long. I need a very industrious guy, somebody who is like, or this text is sending I'm saying, what are you doing? You to be careful. Or chill on spell. And the, the sad thing about this is that, especially the men, you don't read in between the lines. So when you see it like this, you get so excited. So about sending me, so a boy, and you so a boy. No, people are who be other than I won't say agents. Hey. So, when at all will you read in between the lines? Friends with benefits. They said there is one called the one sided situation. Who now do Nipan by Nipan or no? And some of you, you are killing yourself for people who do not want you. You don't know when to say that it is enough. Let me cut ties with this person and look for somebody else. You've been with this person for seven years. They be on this car. Like you are begging this person. You are cooking. You are, you are doing everything you are supposed to do. Still. Or say, hold on. And you are there. When the person wants to release the person looks for you. But apart from that, you are not important to this person in any way. And you are still killing yourself. Some of you young guys, you are looking for a particular lady. You will remove all the money on you and give it to this lady. And this lady too has noticed So this lady will intentionally make the soon soon tall also. Into other singles, you are saying me me fam who said titi. Me nimso who me abi bi bi no. Into your fan who said titi or do in chair oh. And they cry me nidi yo oh ubedi day. You feel that is the ubedi day and they removing the money that will give you more points with this lady. But the truth is that this lady doesn't want you. When would you notice that this person doesn't want you? One-sided situation. You've cried, you've prayed, you've begged. 21 days, yeah, 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 why you be? But still, send your penetrity, and you are still there. One-sided situation. Are you here with me? Now, oh, top box, oh, top vest, oh, shit. Some people go to the extent of looking for the people's parents. Now, to baby, now, so many of the provisions, command them, meaning, hey, some people can do things, oh, Charlie, I heard the story and I was shocked. This lady can shop a whole hamper every month, or yes, shopping. See, and found, come, bear my name, for, and the parents were enjoying it, but they knew. That they didn't want the guy to even marry the lady. And some of you, you are in church. When will you wake up and say that I can't take this any longer? I've been taken for a fool for far too long. When will you wake up? Sister school, you are paying school fees. You do You see, the person told you that you asked for the proposal. Hold on, let me finish school. So you are paying school fees for four years, so that when she's done with school, she will marry you. If she hasn't accepted it before entering the school, wafa, forget. One-sided situationship. How many people are in one-sided situationship here? Oh, mamos also. One-sided situationship. 
Some of us are also in what is called the purely physical situation. And you are not in Sanan Oh, no, I know you are not Oh, no, I know you not in Sanan Amuho. Now, they are feel you. Now, they are about you. And you are saying, you are laughing. Oh, man, yes, sir. Oh, bra Frank. Oh, oh, me, dear. Oh, hey. It's the pen I bet to me now. Now, so I can say, bra Frank, die, sir. Now, I'm not your toy. This guy can do anything he likes to you in public. Maybe there's somebody somewhere who even admires you, but because of how this bra Frank is touching, touching and me, me and you, this person will walk by. And you are there, and you are in Cairo, bra Frank, oh man, yes, sir, oh yes, I'm a ferry. What ferry are catching his own yai? Catching his own yai. You are in church. You are in church. You are in the office. Your boss is me, me and you. You can't say no. Because of 500 Ghana salary, you're my own team. Situationship. There is one which is also called the almost there situationship. Just a more worry, I don't know. More worry, I don't know. More to bag, more to handkerchief, more to untuma. Almost there, oh. They be a year to shadda. They be every year. You start, you buy something, and this guy sat down with you and told you that, eh, hey, you know, the way the economy is, things are tough. So we will share the bill. When I buy one cloth, you should buy one cloth. Say, see, I know what one, who what of five. And you are telling him that you see, let's try this year. Try you are the one forcing the thing, but the person is not really interested. Hey, we are almost there. Oh, or say this year, you be worried. They be here, or say this year, you be worried me. Oh, we are almost there. Oh, he even went home last night and last week and said hello to my mother. hello. I didn't want for the bus and find in the Where is it that only hello? They be our corner and cocker hello. Now, oh my, yeah, beba. That be now, oh beba. Almost there. Chesa fi bia na ise ya wari ya ni o chese ya be wari ya no no na bibia ba me ante wunti ye jai ye fa nko next year pompa abo me ma me nine inti next year oh wa fi we ka ka si mi sim inti next every time there's an excuse it is not only the men who do that there are also women who do that they've used you as their chocker blocker or she may be the person's target is fifi and Fifi is not doing things, so they are hanging on to you. In I say, Mo ya be na Fifi be show up. Oh, dear, you train. This year, I don't think I'm so ready. I, I want to go back to school. Oh, yes, sure, say school now. Oh, no. And you are, you are still hoping that Fifi will come so that you can dump this one. Almost their relationship. I pray that anybody in an almost their relationship, your prayer program, yeah, that relationship should break. Hey, are you be here? On the one until one yam ten, one more you ten you So, who did you go? Who you go next month? Me waro. What happened? Who you go the following month? Waro. Oh, you know it wouldn't be so nice. You see the role I play in church. If you keep this pregnancy, I said I will marry you. Let's go. Let's go. Then, uh, you, hey, I will surprise you. Uh, then you see this person talking to daddy. When the person comes, hey, you see I was talking to daddy. I went to daddy and told daddy that. Things work. Oh, really? Hey, then daddy shouldn't know. Let me go and remove it. Who could ye? Who ye will see all their trouble? Daddy said I should come and see him. So after seeing that, daddy in country, oh boy. Oh boy. Almost there. When would the day be there? Some of you are in church and you are tolerating too much nonsense. You are tolerating too much nonsense. Somebody, some of you are also in comfortable situationship. If you are now, I say, I say, muti bo I say, roommate name pna phone ya wari like you are living together, you are comfortable. Adi ane nyanya wari, no so nyanya pna chwe, no so like pay as you go. You see, you are both comfortable. You are, you are all okay. Like if we marry, fine. If we don't, like, but you are okay. You pay the bills and everything. So you don't even see the need to force anything. You are in a comfortable situation. 
There are some of us who have gone into this thing and it's destroyed our mentality concerning marriage, concerning relationship, and what God intends to do with our lives. So there's always battle. Our Cain's and our Abel's are in battle. Otihei, if we can get into your mind and check it, the one you are with now, you don't really like the person. You are wishing for somebody else. So why are you with the person? You are praying for somebody else to come. Then why are you with the person? Who confused you? Who deceived you? What have you eaten? What have you taken into your tummy that is doing you something which is there in your mind? Let's go back to our verse in Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 4. After all this, there was a curse on man and everything. They gave it to Adam and Eve, uh, they, Cain and Abel. There was a battle. They went their separate ways. And I'm hoping that today some people, you allow some people to go their separate ways. Because if they don't go their separate ways, your Seth will not come. Let's go to Genesis 4. Braform Kakase 20 something, oh baby. Go to 25, let me see. The Bible I used, when it got to this verse, it wrote on top of it, the new age, the new age. Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and named him Seth. For she said, God has appointed for me another child instead of Abel, because Cain killed him. Next verse. To Seth also a son was born, and he named him. At that time, people began to invoke the name of the Lord. So, during the Cain and Abel dispensation, they forgot about God. Right? So, after Seth was born, after a new generation came into being, they began to invoke the name of God. Today, I want a new generation, a new set to begin in your life. A new set to begin in your marriage. says, You've done things. You've put yourself in awkward situation. But if you can sit back and say that I lost it, I messed up, I've slept with a thousand and one men, but I will sanctify myself, put my life right, renew my mind, go back to God and say, God, give me another chance. Get to know God again and say, God, give me myself. I believe you will have another chance like Ruth, whose husband was dead, but yet met Eboaz. Is somebody here with me? It's, you see, when I said a woman told me that she thinks that most of the young people in my church are married and I got shy. It's true, I got shy. But then I realized that some of us, it's not because we cannot get married. It's because of our mentality. Today, if you listen to the couple, they decided to get married with the, the, the little that they had. But as they went ahead, things started falling in place. You haven't even tried to go ahead. You are there and you are saying you don't have. So you will not even try. But you are messing up. Every time you see this person, the lust that comes out of your heart and the sex you have, but you still go and you continue why don't you take a step and say that let's start this with a new set let's move on to another level yeah so let's get to another level in our relationship so that it will not always be say yeah call back we are having sex and we feel guilty and we come to church and we are hiding and we are doing this why don't we straighten things up Let me tell you something. Sex is a powerful tool. 
But the world tries to let us know that sex is just for pleasure. There is nobody that you have sex with that you don't have a link to or a spiritual tie to. Even if it was a rape, there is a sort of anger that you see somebody that looks like the person. Why is it that if there is no connection when it comes to sex, why is it that, that way? Let's stop abusing sex as a church. The Bible says we should wait. Why has it become so difficult for us to wait? And then they will ask us a question that when you go and you want to go and buy a car, you try it first. Are you a car? Or are you a moto? That they have to try you and see whether your engine is working. Haven't you realized that you can buy a car which engine is working, but you step out and then it goes off. So when it goes off, will you throw that car away and go back and you look for, because you have invested in that car, you look for ways and means to maintain that car, right? So whatever be the case, the God that I serve, I don't know the one you serve. But if you are in rich ministries, maybe there's a probability that you serve the one that I serve. The God that I serve will not give you anything that is not worth it. Hello? What of, sort of situation ship are you in? You are in church. What sort of situation ship do you find yourself in? Are you still doing the blame game? If it wasn't because of my mother, if it wasn't because of my father, if I was born in America, if you were born in America, and you say, we were soon hearing, tattoo, a Chinese notice board. When will you stop the hide and seek you are playing with God? You are one in church, one outside, doing things, friends with benefit, friends. When will you stop all these things and focus and believe God to give you a set to start a new generation? Tomorrow I'll be talking on the MS doors of Impenetri. And I'll tell you something that if you don't check the foundation, you cannot put a building on. Let me tell you something. This building we have here, no matter who you are, you can't take this building and put it on the foundation where the teen service people are. Can you? Some of you, the foundation that you have set, you have destroyed the foundation. Meanwhile, you want a president to marry you. What foundation is down there? What have you set down there? Hello? The foundation that you have built for yourself the kind of lifestyle that you are in, who do you think would want to marry you? A young woman decided to come for counseling with me. And the person who wanted to bring her decided to talk to this friend before bringing her. They were talking and this person was complaining about their marriage and everything and their husband is like this and all those things. You know the problem in the marriage. This guy met, this lady met a Yahoo boy and realized that there is money. So as for Yahoo, dear, now the Yahoo is not coming and she's crying. Why are you crying? You set the foundation for Yahoo. So definitely Yahoo will be built on you. Yahoo too is once in a while time something. So if the Yahoo doesn't work, bets will come in. Anna, super bets, bebem. Super bad fails, Lotto will come in. Very soon, all the properties that you gain through Yahoo, you sell them. What foundation have you set? Today, I want somebody to clear their mindset. I don't want any fight. Don't say the woman who came to preach, I should leave, I beg. Don't include me. That thing that is not working, that person that whenever you want sex, you go to. Today, you have to ask God that God, let me be able to leave these people behind, my Abel and my Cain, and let me look for a new generation, a new set, so that I can move on. Amen. Any questions for me?
Please, is it advisable for a married couple to open a joint account? This question, I've answered it a number of times. Me, I will not do it. That is personal. Me. Yeah, for rule, I mean, I would not open a joint account with my husband. Not because I am bad. And not because my husband is bad. But the sort of work my husband does. My husband can decide that today he will clear all the bank accounts and go and use it to build one structure or buy one instrument some way. And that day, we will sleep hungry. But you see, after buying it, you will come home and expect that God will provide. So let me be that shadow God that will provide by saving in a personal account and allowing him to also save. But you, maybe you are good to go. You can save together. There are people who have done it and they work perfectly well. Don't migrate somebody's own and put it into your own. Me, my own. It will not work, so I will not try Please, I hope you understand. I hope I've answered the question. Next one. Please, my question is, how helpful is it for a woman to marry a guy who is younger than her? What are the factors surrounding the situation in order for this kind of relationship to be successful? <sighs> if the guy is younger than you, is the guy matured? There are certain questions you need to ask. Is the guy mature to handle you? Is the guy ready to be with you? Would you be able to submit to a man who is younger than you? Because whether he's young or not, he's supposed to be the head of the home. And he, most of the time, will take the final decision of the home. If you be able to do all these things and you both agree, why not? It can work. But some of you, so don't try. But if you think you can't submit as a woman, why not? You can go ahead. But seek intelligence counsel before you take the step. Next question. Mine is, why do our dating partners, the boys, ignore their family when dating, but as soon as you get pregnant for them, that is when anything that comes out of their mouth is about their family. Example, let me ask my mom or my uncle before giving money. You see, the thing is that you were dating. You've gotten yourself in a born one situation, Abby. So your Cain and your Abel are battling. That is a pure example of your Cain and your Abel. And you might have to deal with this for a very long time because there is a child or a human being involved. You have to be able to learn to live with this because the truth is that sometimes we start in Pnachi without our parents. But it gets to a point, no matter who you are, your parents would start playing a role to some extent in your marriage. I tell people this, that if you decide to settle down with somebody, if you decide to marry somebody, there's something that when people come for counseling, I always tell them. You need to sit the person down. Let me tell you something. There are some families, eh? Everybody abandoned school and they put their money together and made that particular person go to school because that was, in quotes, maybe the smart child of the home. So they all decided not to go so that one person, the, the money was enough for one person. So this person built his life. Things are not so good at home, but this person built his life, gradually rises through the ranks and maybe becomes a director in a company, a bank manager somewhere, maybe something, a pastor of a prominent church and all these things. You meet this person along the way, right? So you don't know what has gone into the background of this person. You meet this person, things are nice, this person gives you money and all those things. You don't question anything. You marry this person and this person takes money to the sister and you don't understand. You will not understand. But if this person was to tell you that it was my sister who decided to abandon school and went to Mokola to work 
and take care of me. When the person is giving money to the sister, you will understand. But sometimes we don't listen to all these things. We feel that once I have found you and you are working and you are driving, you are my bonafide property. The Bible says, live and cleave. So leave everything and cleave. He will live and cleave. But the truth is that without a parent's blessing, I hope I can stop answering this question. Now I'm done. Or I should continue. Everybody comes from somewhere. Let's not forget that. Everybody comes from a home. So no matter what you do, somebody will want to take care of somebody at home. You just have to be wise and talk about it. So when you are going to marry somebody, ask the person, who do you owe allegiance to? You see, so we get into marriage and sometimes our partners cannot even tell us that their salary is this. Because if they tell you and you get to know that they take a certain portion home, you get angry. So they tell you a small portion. When they come, they give it to you. But they are buying yam and things and hoarding it and taking it somewhere else. But if we were open and you were able to tell them that, listen, my mother struggled. She was a single mother. She took care of me from day one and has never enjoyed life. So I have decided that if I get a job, this is what I'll do to my mother. You coming on board would understand and then it will be mutual for you to know that let's do it this way or let's do it that way. I always use this as an example. I'm an only child of my, I'm the only child of my mother. My mother is not in the country. My husband is the first son of the family. There are times during Christmas, my husband will say, oh, we have to take some things to his mother, my mother-in-law. Sometimes he sends me or tells me that this is something, let's go and give mommy this or that and that. Fine, I do it. You see, some of you, you would have struggled with this because you say that you are doing it for your mother. Why are you doing it for my mother? My mother doesn't need it at this time. Where will I take the rice to? My mother doesn't live in this country. Where will I take the rice to? Oh yeah, where will I take it to? The Ghana city, what will she use it for? But it might, at a point, my mother might need our help. And at that time, it would be right for us to all come together and be on my mother's side. But for now, why don't the two of us take care of his mother? What's the big deal? Some of you, you don't get this thing. And you are always fighting in your home. You have done it for my mother, so do it for me too. Me too. My mother needs some. If it's one rice, one rice, and we share it equal. But everybody's need is different. I hope you get me. Next question. Good evening, mommy. Can you remain... Being a side chick because there is security in the relationship. If that is your wish. <laughs> you see, this is somebody who has decided to stick with Cain and Abel. So there will always be bloodshed. You have decided to forever be a side chick. No problem, more grease to your elbow. If after all this, this is your wish for your life because there is security. What do you mean by the security? There is security because there are no strings attached. This person gives you money. You have sex once in a while. You don't have to cook and clean. Abby, once in a while, he comes around and he goes to his wife. You have kids for him. He will pay school fees. What if one day this person wakes up and says, enough, let me stay with my wife? What will you do? Will you curse God or you curse yourself? Now who calls him? Security. What if the security doesn't last? What if this person loses his job? The security that you depend on, what will happen? I know a story of a woman in my area. The man's wife was not giving birth. And this woman came in contact with this man and did everything possible to give this man a child. Immediately, this ma woman gave birth. The man's wife got pregnant. Fast forward. This woman will not work. She will not do anything. Because to her, she's the one who gave the man the first child. The man had a very good job. So, just uh, say, good quality school. This girl was in a good quality school doing everything, the man was paying this woman's rent because I have a child with you. Last year, the man died. 
So the man died, and one of the days I met this woman running and looking for taxi. What is the matter? They said she has heard that they are sharing the man's property, so she's going to collect her daughter's own. You know that because in her mind, this man would always rent for me. This man couldn't even buy her a quarter plot of land. All she had was a container. And she was selling eggs. And the egg business too collapsed. So now she's not working. So you ask that what will be the future of this child? So if you are comfortable with that, I can't say much. You have helped a lady like through school, but afterwards her family don't want you even though they are aware of you, your age. Then the lady brings a suggestion that get her pregnant, then the family will accept you. Is it a good one? No. Let me tell you something. In my few years on this earth, eh, I've come to realize that there are times God says no in a way that we do not understand. There are times that some relationships are not meant to be, but we don't listen. There are times that some relationships are not meant to be. I've seen people who never listened. <clears throat> if this is the situation, if you really want to be with a girl, look for people and inquire why the parents or the family doesn't want you to marry this girl. Don't go ahead and impregnate her. Impregnating her doesn't mean anything. It will not do anything. Take your time. Look for people to go to their family and them. You talk too much. You meet somebody today and the person can draw you. Eh, and you know, I used, to, I used to go out with this person and this person came into my life and me, I said I didn't like and this one too came. So you are telling the person that oh dear, you are so cheap that everybody can propose to you at any time. You talk too much. Take your time. Every step and what you need to reveal, and it takes wisdom for you to know that this is the time for me to say it, but this is the time not for me to say this. Next question. What is the cutoff point that the man you are dating should introduce you to his family? Cutoff point. And yeah, grade, grade I, 34. B is aggregate 34, and I'm 40. Which one? Cut off point that the man you are dating should introduce. You see, <clears throat> I want to try and understand this thing that at what point do you cut a man off if he is not introducing you to his family? If he's hiding you, be careful. One, you know part of the family, but. He hasn't said anything. He hasn't done anything. What does the mother call you? Hey, in this, in this season, eh, there are mothers who can do, see you as, hey, I saw, oh, me back on the Oh, wow. Oh, boy. Hey, boy, now catch her, say, she will rough. Boy, catch her, say, girl, we are she rough. So when you come there, hey, oh, I saw on the But meanwhile, you are three different people. Everyone is a so on the The woman is giving everybody fans. The truth is that they know the one they want. You, they are using you to get what they want. So be careful. If he's not introducing you, let me tell you something. I tell people that, listen, always, always get wise counsel. Nobody knows it all. Me and Mijinahe, I don't know it all. I beg you. We know in parts. Always get wise counsel. If it's becoming too much and you don't get it, talk to somebody who has been there and who understands so that the person can guide you in your decision making. Otherwise, somebody will make a fool out of you. Last two questions. Then we go. The questions are done. Okay. If you are dating and whenever you talk to your partner about marriage, she brushes it off. What do you do? Move on. Umpel. 
She's not ready to get married to you. A woman, you know, is we the women who usually push for marriage. So if you are with a woman and you talk about marriage and she tells you that, oh, you take your time. Oh, you this, oh, you this. You see, time is against women more than against men. Abby. So if the woman is dragging her feet, Masa, Onfilu, Asemintia, so advise yourself. Last question. Is it okay for a married man to genuinely offer financial assistance to a single lady with no strings attached? Oh, yes. Why not? But the thing is that sometimes because of the financial assistance, you, the lady, might develop something for the man. You might. Because in your head... After eating the apple, it's told you that no man gives you anything for free. And you feel that once you have been given some assistance, something has to happen. It's true, there's no free lunch. But my God also has surprises, right? God can send you a deliverer from somewhere, somebody you don't know. Sometimes once in a while, somebody will just come into your life and change your life for good and you will not see the person again. And it's a typical example of what Pastor Charles talked about that somebody came just when he was about to marry, gave money and left. It can happen. But you have to clear your mindset and get your mind straight so that even in case at a point, if this married man decides to show interest, you let him know that that was not the beginning of the deal. Because if you start going around and maybe sleeping with this man, whatever it is that started on a good note, will end in a mess. I hope I've answered you all your questions. Thank you very much. So, wonderful. Can we do it for her? Wonderful, 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 wonderful. I, I'm still learning. I don't know about you. Are we learning? Are we learning? Let me tell you a, li a little story. Years ago, a lady my mom adopted. This lady has always believed God for a white man to get married to. And so there was a day she got this white man and we all gathered to go to the house for the engagement.